Hey, thank you for joining me. I'm going to wait for some people to sign on live and appreciate you guys watching. I want to share something with you. I want to share an announcement with you. And uh, I want to talk to you about revival a little bit and hope everybody's doing well where you're at. I want also to ask you to put your prayer request in the comment section. If you have a prayer request, just post it and um, we're going to go to the woods when we leave here and go and pray and and uh, we'll pray over your request. We'll pray at the end of this over everything, but we'll go and uh, spend some time in the woods in prayer over your request. Uh, thank you guys for joining me. I can't sleep without these. I, I, I'm 51 today, so hey, I got an excuse. Good evening, Bubba. How you doing? All right, good evening, Joseph. Appreciate y'all watching. Appreciate y'all joining me. Old Bubba, you keeping Gino straight? Hey, Patrick. Ellen, hope you're doing good, buddy. Praying for you. And uh, hey, Annette. TJ West, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Hey, Katrina. Tell TJ I said hello. And um, we're going to be uh, doing a revival December the 4th at Bladenboro First Baptist Church. And I wanted to get on here tonight and let you guys know about it, but I also wanted to say that we're going to be praying for the next 20 nights. Um, we're just going to maybe be here at the fire pit or down in the woods. We're going to be praying for revival for Bladenboro. And I wanted to ask you guys to pray with me for the next 20 nights. You're welcome, brother Patrick. But I, I wanted to see if I could get y'all to pray. I really feel strong in my heart that God's wanting to do something special there. I know um, we all want to see revival break out somewhere where it doesn't really matter as long as we can just be in a revival and but uh there's something about it i don't know that when i was there i just felt that god really wants to do something at bladenburg first baptist church in that area that's not just for the church but would be for the whole town the entire town and i really believe that if i didn't believe that i wouldn't say it um but i just feel strongly about that and it'll start December the 4th. And if you can come, I want you to come. But if you can't, please pray. Pray for revival. Pray for an awakening. Pray for God to pour his spirit out on our town. I love my town. I love the town I'm from. And uh, we're, we're a, a great small town. We have our own problems like every other town. And there's a lot of division in our town um, among churches, I would say. Uh, when I say that, I don't mean it, mean there's anger or animosity but there's just division it just it's hard for people to come together and i don't think that's just our town it's in, it's in every town but god wants us to come into unity and thank god we've already had two churches that have agreed to move their services to bladenburg first baptist uh one's coming sunday night with their sunday night service and another is coming wednesday night with their wednesday night service so right off the back back right off the bat i can't talk tonight god is bringing unity and i know this is his will and so we're going to come together and pray every night and uh my prayer is that you'll come and be a part of it you'll get your church praying let your churches know to be praying for the bladenboro bladenboro revival at bladenboro first baptist church starting december the 4th it's scheduled from december the 4th which is sunday night to wednesday the 7th uh, however i've been told if god gets in it they're willing to keep going and so uh, we'll just be looking to see how the Lord leads. And um, so be praying with me about that. And again, post your prayer request on these. Don't 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 feel embarrassed or uh, don't feel like you can't. Matter of fact, I'm, I encourage you to please post your prayer request so we can pray for you. Um, a lot of people need prayer. There's a lot of people going through a lot of different things. A lot of people feel that their lives is in a mess, and uh, you feel that you don't even really know which way to look. A lot of people feel hopeless, alone. Many people feel that God is nowhere near and struggle with that, struggle. As, as a lady that messaged me today said she, um, she stares at her ceiling fan looking for God most and never sees nothing but a ceiling fan. She just never sees God move in her life. And she feels, she feels alone and my heart goes out to her and, and there's a lot of people like that. There's a lot of people feeling that. But you can believe this. If you can't believe anything else, 
you can believe that God will never, ever leave you. He will never forsake you. You're the center of his attention, of this world to him. You are, individually, each and every one of us. And I know it doesn't seem like it. I know there's times when you feel like you're all alone, and there's times when you don't hear his voice, you don't feel his spirit, and you just you believe that you are just walking completely isolated. You are not alone. My God will never leave you. He loves you. And when we look in the Word of God, we see where people felt the same way. They went through the same battles, the same struggles. But God brought them through it. And when he brought them through it, they come out on the other side, victorious warriors for Christ. And in these last days, these dark times we live in, God is, I, I feel like, really trying to hone, get us to hone in on, on our spiritual gifts and our and what we're really called to do. We can spend a lot of time trying to figure out things in this world and trying to uh, make money and trying to uh, raise our families and, and, and good things we're trying to do, but do we spend enough time focusing on why am I here? I'm 51 years old today. By the way, I wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you to all my friends and, and that have uh, sent me birthday wishes and text me and called, messaged me. Thank you, it, it blessed my heart and I appreciate that. I feel the love. 51 years old and was talking to a friend of mine, Ronnie West, me and him used to run together pretty hard back in high school and we were talking. I was like, you know, I just remember just yesterday we were in the Mustang and uh, going to do probably up to no good, but now we're both, he's, he's a little bit older than me, we're, I'm 51 and just like that. And it was Billy Graham that said the most surprising thing to him about in his life was the brevity of life, how fast it passes by. Do we spend enough time focusing on what, God, what is it that I'm supposed to do? What, what am I supposed to do with my life? I have run hard from God before I was saved. I ran, I did not want to be a preacher. You're crazy if you think I want to be a preacher. No way I want to be a preacher. I mean that. I'm not, I, and, and you guys, the reason I'm on my homepage, I'm talking to Bladenburg. I'm talking to Bladen County. Y'all know me. I'm the least likely to be a preacher. Some of you know me. So I ran. I ran. And everywhere I ran, every church I went to, it seemed the preacher would preach about Jonah. It was it was so bad that Beverly would just elbow me and when the preacher would say, Let's turn to the book of Jonah, she would elbow because everywhere I went it was like Jonah, Jonah, Jonah ran. Every time you run from God, you run down. You run you don't run up, you run down. And so finally, after I was born again and and God called and I accepted the call to preach, I ran hard again. I ran hard trying to do stuff for God, trying to figure him out. What does he want me to do? And asking everybody's opinion and getting a bunch of people's ideas and watching other people and what they do and trying to emulate maybe what they're doing and and, and, and just trying to do, it's like I'm throwing, whatever sticks, just throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall. But recently, I've gotten quiet and just started meditating on Jesus and waiting. And I think it's age, I think it's experience and wisdom. I think a lot of it's charging the hill and looking back and God's still standing down there at the bottom, he never told you to run up the hill, you're up there by yourself. And he's like, hey, uh, you're on the wrong hill, come back. And I've learned that if you don't know, maybe this is for somebody tonight. If you don't know if God is telling you to do something, it's either not God or it's not time. Maybe that would have been a great title. It's not God or it's not time. Because he's a big enough God. If he wants you to do something, you will know it. I knew without a shadow of a doubt he wanted me to be saved. 
January 18, 2003. He actually wanted me to be saved before then, but I was stupid and hard-headed and went through hell until I finally was born again on a golf course. I knew without a shadow of a doubt he wanted me to preach. I know without a shadow of a doubt, as sure as I know I was called to preach, that I'm supposed to preach at Bladenburg First Baptist Church in this revival. I know it like I know my name. Can't tell me no different. Not up here, but in my spirit. That's assurance. That's that's the, the Holy Spirit letting you know, yes, this is what I'm telling you to do. But there's a lot of times in my life when I don't have a clue what to do. And I'm trying to figure it out. And I think, well, God, are you going to do something about this? Are you going to just, are you, are you, hello? Are you going to do something? But you know what? The hardest thing we'll do is just wait and be patient. And we see everything happening around us and we think, oh my God, this is just, things are out of control. They're never out of his control. Never. I think that when the Israelites were looking at, the, at Pharaoh and the army coming up behind them and they were facing this the Red, the Red Sea, I'm sure that they felt the, the pressure. We got to do something. God, you need to do something. And when God parted that sea, I'm sure they felt relieved that they saw a supernatural move of God. But guess what? The Pharaoh, Pharaoh and his army followed them. And I'm sure they thought, oh God, they're, they're, still, they're still coming behind us. He opened the door, but he didn't close the door on them. But what they didn't know, hallelujah, and what you might not know, is them going behind them was all part of the plan. From the beginning, God was going to destroy them. And when that door opened to cross that sea, that door was not for Pharaoh and his army to get across. That was their door of deliverance. It was his door of destruction. The same door that God opens for you will destroy your enemies if they try to follow you. And by the way, they may follow you. We serve a God that opens doors and closes doors. And no man can shut them doors. There's not a devil in hell and there's not a man that can stop what God has says you will do. If you will go in faith, nothing can stop it. You'll have opposition. You'll have all kinds of things come at you, but God will bring you through it every single time. So if you don't know what to do right now and you're feeling alone and you're feeling trapped trust him when you can't do anything else you're in a good spot because that's when you can just say lord it's an issue this is on you i need you to show up i need you to do what you only you can do and y'all i'm gonna be honest with you that's what i'm feeling about this revival my hometown has i don't know how many churches if i tried to guess i would be wrong but it's probably there's probably 20 churches in the city limits. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Somebody out there might know. Might be less than that. Might be 12, 10, I don't know. And you would think if there's ever gonna be a revival, it would happen, you know, with all them churches. And, and yet it just seems like we, we don't have a real move of God like that. There was one that came one time. I remember, came to a church. I'm looking for that again. I'm looking for God to move in Bladenboro again, to stir people's hearts, that people become broken, that we become broken over not only the world and the state of the world, but our own sin, become broken over the lack of trust, the lack of uh, faith, and the lack of passion that we have for the things of God. And that we get so broken that we just want to fall at his feet. And at the same time, he will reach down with that mighty hand and wrap his arms around you and say, I love you with the everlasting love and with loving kindness, I have drawn you to myself. Do you remember what it felt like when you were saved? Do you remember the power that you felt when you were saved? Do you remember the love 
the forgiveness, the joy when you were saved. I remember. I can't get over it. Now, I'll tell you, I've been chasing a high for a long time. I've been chasing a high. You can't get it from weed. You can't get it from a pill. You can't get it from a can. This is a high. It's a heavenly high. And I got a double dose of it on that golf course in January 18, 2003. I got a double dose, and I was high as a kite for a long time, spiritually high. But over time, my high came down. And I've been chasing that high. And I guess we can become addicted to that spiritual addiction of just wanting God's presence. But here's the thing. When you really think about when you experience God and you're chasing that same experience, you're not the same person. And you're not in the same situation that you were in when you had that. And what happened was God brought you into a situation and circumstances and things to break you and to be in you and to open your ears that you could hear him and open your eyes that you could see him. And when you experienced him and he was more real than you ever thought he was and you were just overwhelmed and blown away with this love that this God has for you, the, the love, you can't be the same. But it took a lot to get you there. It took a lot before you got to that point. And I really believe that that's the secret to true revival. That we have so much attached to us and so much that has built up since then that it's almost like peeling an onion. God just has to keep peeling layers off of us and layers off of us and layers off of us. Off of us. And it's called repentance. And when God shows us things that we need to repent of, we need to repent of them right in. God, forgive me and turn from it. Say, Lord, I'm thirsty for you. I'm hungry for you, for more of you. I don't want this world. Man, let me tell you, I've had enough liquor. I've had enough beer. I've had enough of a lot of things. I didn't, that's not gonna, that's not the high I want. I want, I, I want that. I want that spiritual high when you walk into church and it's foggy and it's just the power of God is in that place. And people, when you come, you're just thinking, who's getting saved tonight? What is God going to do tonight? Don't you miss that? You say, well, I've never had that. Well, it, I have. I've seen it. And that's what I'm praying for. I'm praying that God, the Holy Ghost, will move in Bladenboro, North Carolina. And that the, the biggest talk of our town won't be the beast of Bladenboro. The biggest talk of our town will be the Bladenboro Revival and what God done there. How he flipped that town upside down and just poured his spirit out all over the place. That's what I'm praying for. Not for a man to get glory, but for God to get glory. Not for a church to be glorified, but for God to be glorified. That's what I'm praying for. And I'm going to be praying for that tonight, right down there in them woods. And before we go, I'm going to pray right now. But I, I want you again, I want you, if you would, to post your prayer request. And we'll pray for them tonight. And we'll answer you. Um, I can't do it right now, but we'll do it once we get down there to pray. And you post your prayer request. And, and you know what? If you would, if you're going to pray with me for the next 20 nights, I wish you would just let me know, hey, I'll be here. For the next 20 nights, I'll be here. If you would comment that, for the next 20 nights, I'll be here. Lord willing, because I know things can come up. But for the next 20 nights, I'm going I'm to I'm be doing this. I'm going to be asking God for revival. Believe, please send revival to Bladenboro. And you know what? You want me to tell you why I come on Facebook and do this? And y'all know I don't hold back. I'm just going to be honest. Because you can't get people to really pray. You can't get churches to get serious. A lot of them are so consumed with what's going on in their own walls and and with COVID and everything. Everybody's just trying to recover and whatever. But if I'm just being honest with you, I don't have confidence in asking a bunch of churches to pray. Do I do I want them to pray? Yes. Do I would I be Yes. But I do believe 
that there's a lot of people watching this video or will watch this video that will pray every, every day. God, my Father, please send revival to Bladenboro on December the 4th. Please send revival to Bladenboro First Baptist Church, not for the building, not for the church, but for the town, for the community. Hey, my friends in Elizabeth Town, Dublin, Carton, and Tar Hill, my prayer is that it spills out countywide and it becomes a countywide revival. I can't make it happen. You can't make it happen. But if we start praying and asking God, he can make it happen. He says in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. So right now, if you would, I want you to, first of all, I want you to post a prayer request if you have it. Post what you, a, a, something, I cannot talk, something that you would like for us to pray about. And then we're, after you do that, I want you to join me in prayer. My Father and my God in heaven, I thank you, Lord, for this platform, this opportunity, Lord, to ask for prayer. Lord, I, I'm sincerely coming asking them to join me praying for revival to be sent to Bladenburg First Baptist Church on December 4th, the week of the 4th, that 4th and all. Lord, I'm praying that you'll pour your spirit out. I'm praying that you'll manifest, the Holy Ghost will just manifest to where there's no doubt that your hand is upon that place. Father, I pray that your spirit would brood over the town of Bladenburg. Lord, let there be a heaviness over our hometown a heaviness over our lack of unity, our lack of love, our lack of passion. Lord, that we don't look at others and say, oh, yes, them, but we look at ourselves and say, oh, Lord, it's me. Please forgive me. Lord, let it start with me. Lord, I can't stand up and preach anything being a hypocrite. Father, I have to get my, my heart right with you. And the only way that can happen is total surrender. So right here on live, be, Lord, I, I just, I tell you, I surrender my heart. I surrender my will to you. I, I surrender 100% to you. I pray you have thy way, your way be done. I pray that you Jesus be glorified. I pray that many souls would be saved. Lord, we have addiction, Lord, pill addictions in our town. and our, Lord, I, I pray for many of them, strongholds to be broken. I pray for chains to fall off, people to be born again. I pray, God, that when people are, even the, the drug dealers, Lord, will, will sense that you are, you are near and be convicted. And, Lord, that they'll turn away from that life and give their hearts to you and be born again. Oh, God, I pray that you'd stir the churches. There'd be a fire in every church. Lord, a spiritual flame would just set down inside the walls of every church, Lord, and ignite their passion to worship you. I pray, God, that when we come together in that church on December the 4th, that the power in that place would be unmatchable. The liberty would be something that we've never experienced before completely. And Lord, do you'll do a new thing, something different, something we've not seen before. And God will be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. So Lord, please, again, I ask you in, in joining with my brothers and sisters watching, Sin revival to Bladeburg First Baptist Church December the 4th in that week. But Lord, not to just the building, to the town, to the county. Let it be the Bladenboro revival. Let it be the Bladen County revival. We'll give you the praise and the glory. And Father, I don't know all the needs tonight. Lord, there's a lot of requests and I can't see them all at one time right now. But Lord, when we go to the woods and as Beverly and I answer these, Lord, I stand in agreement with her on behalf of each and every one of these requests that's been given. You have seen every request, past, present, and future that'll be on this video. And my Father and my God, I stand in agreement with my wife on these requests. Lord, I lift them up to you and I pray that you answer their request according to thy, to thy tender mercies and thy loving kindness. And God, I stand in the gap for them. And I ask God that you not see our righteousness for we have none, but you see the righteousness of Jesus Christ upon us and Lord, I pray that you answer these prayers, all the requests. Lord, there's some that need healing in their family, their bodies. There's some that need financial breakthrough. There's some that are lonely. There's some that are struggling with all kinds of things, problems, anxiety, depression, all kinds of problems. My God, I pray that you would handle each and every one, answer their requests, 
so we can give you all the praise and all the glory. For it's in your name we pray this prayer. And Lord, I thank you that I have a place that I can come and talk to my brothers and sisters. I thank you that I have a place down here in the woods in the dark, looking up at the stars. And you're just as powerful there as you are sitting beside this flame. You're the only flame of fire we need. And oh God, I pray that you would just put that flame of fire upon us. Put it on our lips. Put it in our hearts. And God, use us mightily for your glory. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Post your request. We want to pray for you. Have a good night.